Okay, there are. Look, you'll see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Need to shut the light for a bit. We had it. Oh, it doesn't matter, does it? Really? Really, yeah, really, really. Like I know. And you're pouring your face. I don't know, because it's hot. All right, so here we go. Are we ready? Yeah. Countdown's on. <laughs> okay, so we're live at last on time. We're actually a little bit early tonight, so welcome to everyone who's um, watching. When we um, talked on Tuesday night, we talked about doing recipes tonight, so and how many shows a week we do and how long they go for. So I think the general consensus for, so. is two shows a week, Tuesday, Thursday, for about an hour, roughly. Um, Tuesday will be talking about frugal living, living the cheapskates way, budgeting, that sort of thing. And Thursdays will be kitchen time, so recipes and meal planning and grocery shopping and stockpiling and all those things that um, happen in our kitchens um, so that we'll cover as many topics as we can when we get together. Um, so this week I promised for Thursday night to give you my Australia Day Lamington Cupcake Recipe. This came about because a few weeks ago I was cruising around somewhere and came across a cupcake recipe and it was supposed to be for a lamington cupcake. Well, there was not much lamington about it except for the coconut on the icing. So then I was telling Hannah about it and I was brainstorming ways we could make this a real lamington cupcake. And so I have and it's really simple. And can you see those? I'll tip them mm -hmm. down for you. See, coconut on top. And they are just cupcakes, ordinary cupcakes, made with my own two hands. I had planned to actually bake them tonight um, with you in the kitchen and show you how I filled them and what I did with them. But quite frankly, it's 44 degrees and there's no way I'm putting the oven on in 44 degree heat. The house is reasonably cool at 31 degrees inside at the moment so I can cope with that but it's far too hot to have the oven on so I baked them last night decorated them this afternoon for you um, and I hope you're all um, coping with the heat because it is quite miserable and it's quite humid here too on top of being hot now to get to the cupcakes and then the boys will be hanging around because they want to dive into them and try them I have a basic cake recipe, bare bones basic. It's my go-to in a hurry if I need to make a round cake, a square cake, a loaf, cupcakes. This is the recipe I use. It's um, been in my recipe book since I was 12 in Form 1 back in high school. It was one of my cooking class recipes and it's really simple. It's simply a cup of self-raising flour, a cup of sugar, half a cup of milk, two eggs, a teaspoon of vanilla essence and three tablespoons of butter melted and you just beat it all up and depending on how you're cooking it, round tin, loaf or whatever will determine the length of time it bakes for but in a moderate oven, so a 180 degree oven and let it cook. In a round tin, a 20 centimetre round tin, it takes about 25, 30 minutes Square tins, not quite as long, 20 to 25 minutes. Cupcakes, about 15 minutes. Loaf tin takes about 45 minutes to cook. Now, that's a plain cake. It's just a plain butter cake almost. But the beauty of it is you can do anything with it. You can add sultanas to it and it becomes a sultana cake. You can add cherries to it and it becomes a cherry cake. You can add... Um, chocolate to it, cocoa, so add three tablespoons of cocoa and it becomes a chocolate cake. You can use orange juice instead of the milk and it's an orange cake. You can grate lemon rind into it and use lemon juice instead of the milk and it becomes a lemon cake. Add coffee to the milk, leave out the vanilla and you've got a coffee cake. Um, make it up the way I gave it to you 
and when it's out of the oven, brush it with melted butter and then sprinkle it with cinnamon sugar and it's a tea cake. It's a, what do the boys say, bog standard cake recipe and it's so simple and so easy to do that you can't muck it up. So that's my go-to for cupcakes. But if you're not a from scratch cake cook and you want to make these lamingtons, by all means, go right ahead and use a 75 cent chocolate cake mix. It'll do the same job. And they're great. You'll get about a dozen cupcakes from a 75 cent mix. And by the time you add two eggs and some milk, it costs you about $1.24 roughly to make them from a generic Coles or Woolworths cake mix. So they're quite simple to do and very inexpensive. Um, what I did differently with these was, I'll show you, before I iced them, can you see there's a little blob of jam because lamingtons have traditionally in my family, lamingtons have ram, raspberry jam in them. They're also supposed to be um, a white cake, so a butter cake or a sponge cake, but I'm trying to make it a bit special. So excuse me, I've got drips between hay fever and hot weather will survive. Um, so all I did was get my icing bottle and this is um, out of our icing set and I put some raspberry jam in it. Um, I used about probably about half a cup of raspberry jam. I cleaned the jar anyway and mum used to do this when she was filling cakes with jam. A little bit of boiling water and stirred it up and it um, just thins the jam, doesn't make it runny, but it just thins it enough so that it will squeeze into the cake and then I just put it in and fill the cakes with the jam. If you don't have an icing bottle or a um, icing bag to do that, by all means, you know, substitute, innovate is what I'm trying to think of, innovate, get a knife, cut a circle out, pop some jam in, pop the circle back on, just like you would for a butterfly cake, except you're not making the wings. You're just putting the top back on and then add your icing and your coconut. And there are your Australia Day Lamington cupcakes. So I use um, shredded coconut rather than desiccated coconut, but it doesn't really matter. If you've got desiccated coconut, by all means use that. You shredded coconut. Oh, what I also did, was well, I added a husk, sorry folks, I will put the recipe on the website for you. You will be able to find it and you can just copy it straight out. Um, I added a half a cup of coconut and a half a cup of chocolate chips to my cupcake recipe just to make them a little bit more special. Um, again, that's entirely optional. Uh, these took about 17 minutes in a 180 degree oven to cook properly. Um, and that's a fan forced oven. And I know it's fan forced because it says so on the door. Um, if you don't have a fan forced oven, they might take a bit longer. Uh, there they are. They're really good. I had to hide these ones. Otherwise, the troops would have just inhaled them. And I put a, some on the bench before, ready to bring out in a plate, turned around and half the container was gone already. So they are good. They work really well. Um, I told you I cleaned out the raspberry jam jar. This is um, this was a jar of homemade raspberry jam. I don't know if anyone else does this, but when the kids were little, I used to give them a raspberry or strawberry or blackberry or whatever milkshake when the jam jar was empty, just by um, putting some milk in the jar and shaking it up. And I think in this month's journal, I've actually suggested that freezing these makes really good ice. So but there you go, you've got a nice cold raspberry milkshake. That way you're cleaning the jar before you actually have to put it in the dishwasher or wash it by hand. And it's a flavorful, flavored milk for almost nothing and you're not wasting anything. It's a good thing to do. There we go. Um, now I mentioned on Tuesday um, that when we reach a thousand subscribers, we'll have a giveaway we're still tossing backwards and forwards what that will be, but it will be something good. I promise it will be something good. So please remember to do three things for me, like, subscribe and share. 
and there won't be any more hiccups after the debacle on Tuesday. There won't be any more hiccups. We've got that covered now, so you should be able to share this at the end um, when we're over and done with. The other thing we're going to do um, is set up a, an email address or a, actually a form on our website so that you can, if you have questions that you want answered for a YouTube session, you can send them to us and we will go through them and we'll be able to answer them for you, hopefully we don't get 5,000, but, you know, maybe we will and that would be really good, but it would take us longer to answer them. Uh, what else was I going to do tonight? Oh, Jodie wants to know if I have, do I have a budget? Have a budget, yes. And a menu plan. And, yes, a menu plan when I go camping, most definitely. Look, it's pretty much um, what we would be eating at home anyway. Um so that when I'm working out the meals for home, if I know we're going to be away, I take two serves out, pack them and freeze them um, for when we go camping. Otherwise, we pretty much eat the same. Uh, roasts, spag bowl, lasagna, uh, I was going to say tacos, enchiladas, all those sorts of things. Um, soups and stews and the only thing I don't do when we're away is um, wedges, gems or fish um, because they don't, we don't have an oven. I have the camp oven that goes over the fire, but it's just not the same. So I don't even try those. But I do have, when we're away, a set um, meal plan, a menu. I do our menu for a year. So I start about mid-November working out what, worked for this last year um, and carrying over the good stuff for next year, filling in the blanks. And um, this year I've tried something different and I've got one new recipe a month to try, one completely brand new recipe a month to try. Um, not because we were getting bored with what we eat, because I was getting bored with what we were cooking or I was cooking. So that helps keep me interested in meal planning and cooking. Where are we going on our holiday? We're going to Tasmania, Pre. How are you? Um, it's nice to see you on here. We're going to Tassie. We leave on Saturday morning and we'll be away for two weeks. I'm looking forward to it. Thomas is a bit concerned because of the bushfires, but if we hadn't been going to Tassie, we would have been staying around Victorian high country and we have the same issue with the bushfires. So... You know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I've never been to Tassie, so I'm a bit excited about it. Um, we're going with really good friends. So, and hopefully being able to call in and visit other really good friends. So we should have a good time, fires or no fires. We'll just work around it. We don't have a set um, for this holiday, which is quite odd for us. We don't actually have a set itinerary or anywhere to be on a specific time except for the 29th. Um, we need to be in Honeymoon Bay on the 29th of January. So um, Wayne has told me that's where we'll be for the 29th of January, Honeymoon Bay, which I think is on the northwest coast. But don't hold me to it because I don't really know. That's where we're going. Now, who else is on? Maureen. Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Have we found Barb yet? Has Barb been able to make it? Uh, let's see, Judy, Jenny M, just got home from shopping, oh dear, put anything that needs to go in the fridge and freezer away quickly, it'll melt. Um, Rosalie, hi Rosalie, who else is there, I can't see, Ruby Ann, hi, it's all these people, this, this is so nice because I see all these names come through on Facebook and on your on your questions and your answers through the email and now I can see you. It's like meeting you in person. It's really exciting. Um, who else is here? Okay, let's go. Jean from Tassie. Oh, who's from Tassie? Jean. Jean. Oh, Jean. Oh, Jean. Oh, Jean Mills. Yes. Hi, Jean. That's a name I recognise. Whoa. I am going to love it. I can't wait. I honestly can't wait. We've been trying to get to Tassie for 25 years, more. So we're finally doing it. And it's going to be really exciting, I'm sure. Yes, Pre, I will 
post the cake recipe on the website as soon as we're finished here. I've got it all ready to just upload, so I'll be able to get it done for you. I was hoping to put a photo on too, so I might have to guard those two little cupcakes with my life. Um, does anyone else have any other recipe-related questions? There you go. And be warned, I'm not a very good cook. I just cook. I just make normal food. We eat real food in this house. Um, we don't eat organic and we don't eat um, anything fancy. There's no weird ingredients in my pantry. There's We eat pretty much normal real food. So we have fresh fruit and veg. Um, we eat meat and chicken and fish. I bake. We have bread and we have rolls and things. Um, but we eat pretty standard food. It's just what you do with it that um, makes it interesting, I think. Lots of pasta because my boys love pasta. And everyone knows tonight was pizza night. So Moo Pizza Night on a Thursday, they all make their own. Gives me a night off cooking and I love it. Um, they all sort of even pretty much clean up after themselves too, which is a really big thing as well. So, hello, Pamela. Um, it's um, food on a budget that's healthy and clean and easy and non-fussy and great for picky eaters because there's nothing exotic in anything I've eaten. The card ladies know they come to our house for cards and it's pretty much boring, normal food. We don't do anything fancy at all. Um, how many times a month do we eat out? Oh, gosh, no, not even once, not even Thank once you. a month. Um, on our birthdays, we have a family tradition. For our birthdays, we get the, the birthday person gets to choose what's for dinner. So it could be something homemade or it could be takeaway. It could be something that's delivered. Um, occasionally it might be that we actually go out to eat for the birthday. But that's about it. I can guarantee that Thomas will always choose KFC. So once a year, KFC is on the menu. Um, Everyone else fits around. Hannah likes Chinese, but then she likes homemade Chinese too. So Alan likes Indian, but again, he likes homemade Indian too. Wayne's a roast guy, so if I can afford a lamb roast, he's happy with that. And that's what you do. My birthday, I don't care. My birthday, my birthday, Mother's Day, I don't cook. I don't even meal plan for those days. It's up to the family to treat me and usually they're pretty good at it. So it comes in something good. So we probably average, oh, we go five birthdays and maybe our wedding anniversary. So maybe once every two months we would have something like that. Um, it's something I think we keep it as a treat because then it is special and we like it. If we were to eat out all the time, if we were to have takeaway all the time or get something delivered all the time, it would become very boring, I think. We'd become very tired and we wouldn't be able to decide. So it's nice to have the treat. Um, I budget for it. It's part of the birthday budget and part of our anniversary budget. Although even on our anniversaries, we often will just have something special we might buy. I might buy steak and do steak and chips and eggs or something like that. We're very boring, Ooh, says Hannah, um, for our anniversary. Um, this year for our anniversary, it's it's a big one. Um, so, and we won't be here. We'll be away. So we we'll probably go, we might go find a pub somewhere and have, I don't know, a palmer and chips or something. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But we don't eat out a lot. So... Do we eat lean meat? Well, it depends what you call lean. Um, I am the queen of trimming fat. I don't like fat. I fat on meat or chicken. Ugh, don't like it at all. So I have a very sharp knife and I cut it away. And doesn't matter what mince I'm cooking, I brown it in a nonstick pan 
um, and then I always rinse it under boiling water and let it drain. I don't like fat. So I guess, yeah, we do eat lean meat. We don't eat a lot of, um, we don't, well, we don't eat any pork. Um, most of our meat, and we eat maybe sausages once every three months, maybe, Hannah, would that be about right? We don't have sausages very often at all. Um, so it's mostly mince, chicken. And again, I take the skin off and I cut off any visible fat. Um, lamb, I trim as much fat as I can off it. And Wang cooks the lamb on the rotisserie on the barbecue. Um, so the fat drains off that fairly easily. So I guess I don't deliberately go looking for lean meat when I'm shopping. But I guess we do eat lean meats. But again, we don't eat a lot of meat. I'm really conscious of the amount of meat we eat and that's not because it's so expensive but more for the portion control. I think we Australians, even though we complain about it, we have it so good when it comes to food, especially fresh foods like our meat, our poultry, pork if you eat it, and our fruits and vegetables and dairy products are outstanding and we are so spoilt and I noticed, oh, probably three or four years ago, I noticed um, my mother's dinner plates compared to my dinner plates. And it was a bit of an eye-opener because the dinner plates I grew up with fit inside the middle of the dinner plates that I have in my kitchen cupboard at the moment. So that was a real eye-opener to me. Now, I've always been conscious of if a recipe said six serves, getting six serves from the recipe. But... I wasn't quite as conscious of the actual portion sizes as I dished up the meal. Now I am. So, and I also am very conscious of it in the recipes. So I use 500 grams of mince for our spaghetti and that will feed the five of us and usually have a serve left over for either a freezer meal or someone's lunch during the week. Um, so I'm conscious of that chicken two chicken fillets if they're the big ones if they're the smaller ones that are sort of about that size i use three but two chicken fillets generally feeds the five of us with one serve of whatever left over to go into a freezer meal or for someone's lunch during the week you know the um recommendation is a piece of meat the size of the palm of your hand so you know i have a big hand so my hand's not dainty at all. So a piece of meat that size is quite quite a hefty piece of meat. A um, piece of chicken, a piece of steak or whatever is, is more than enough for us. And when we have so many vegetables with our dinner, um, because I do load up the plates with vegetables, yeah, it's, it's just easier and better. So Christine Hill tried the butter and hot water trick and she's very happy with it. Yay. Thanks, Chris. That's really, um, really good to hear. I did post that. I posted that is a leftover from Tuesday night. I posted that on um, Facebook and I put it up on the website too. So you should be able to find it. And I think it's called Robin's Spreadable Butter. Robin's Moose Spreadable Butter. Um, and it, yeah, it's what my mum used to do and Robin, Robin's mum apparently, and it's an old CWA trick. So there you go. Can't beat the old CWA tricks. Um, Any way to watch the last live show? No, I'm sorry. Tuesday was a bit of a, um, it wasn't a disaster. It was a great night and I had an absolute ball. But right before we were due to start, I fell over. Yeah. Um, which is nothing unusual. I, I fall quite a bit, but I did. I made a huge mess on the floor and I hurt myself. So I was a bit shaken up anyway. And then we couldn't get the jolly thing, didn't start the way it was supposed to. And it was just a, that frazzled me even more. And then as we were signing off, I've clicked something and it was gone. So we tried and we searched and we did all sorts of things to try and find it and it's just out there floating around somewhere in the um, World Wide Web. 
and maybe one day we'll find it but no unfortunately there's there's no way and I'm I'm really quite upset because it was my very first YouTube live and I would really have liked to um I'd like to have rewatched it myself Rosalie Rainbow Meats is that Rainbow Meats at Churnside I think they're all over the place aren't they and that's Churnside Park here in Melbourne um, legs of lamb for nine ninety nine a kilo. That's not a bad price. I saw Coles was advertising them for ten ninety nine, I think, and I thought, well, oh, that's yes. they are ten ninety nine. Thanks, Hannah. No, no, no. Chernside. Chernside. Oh, good. Um, so I thought um, it would be my husband's over there making faces at me and throwing, making funny things with his fingers. He's being mean. Um, I thought that would be almost a stock up price gone I, gee, I wish the days of the 5.99 a kilo lamb was back because i would buy a freezer just to fill it and then i'd be able to sell it on ebay or something and retire rich um it would be so good rainbow meats actually has some really good um deals and you can i think they're over the western suburbs of melbourne too um you can look them up online they have a website and i think they have a pretty good loyalty program too maureen might know about that because i think maureen might go to more uh, rainbow meats does she? If you're there, Maureen. Um, it's a bit of a hike for me to go to Chanside, so, and I'm about to go away. Oh, no, can I afford to? Oh, oh, I might be able to do it. I have to, oh, anyway, I'll think about it. But, um, yeah, so what are you writing down there, Dan? Nothing? Um, how do you budget for hobbies? How do I budget for hobbies? We have mad money. Um I have expensive hobbies. One of my hobbies is um, sewn tapestry. Um, I love it and cross stitch and embroidery, but the sewn tapestry is something that I've, I've loved for years. And I actually um, worked really hard when the children were small before Hannah was born. I was pregnant with Hannah, worked really hard, studied really hard and got my guild accreditation to be able to teach. And I taught for a long time. Um, and then cheapskates got too busy and took up too much of my time and I had to put it, you know, something had to give and it was the tapestry classes. Um, that's not cheap. The threads aren't cheap. The canvases aren't cheap. But it's not a quick hobby either. So, you know, one canvas can take a whole winter to do. My other hobbies are um, card making and scrapbooking. Now, I've been scrapbooking and card making for a very long time. So... Over the years, I've managed to gather quite a few tools and accessories and things, um, which has really helped because, you know, your tools, once you've got those tools, they last forever if you look after them and accessories. I was blessed a couple of years ago with a friend in Sydney who um, ran a very big um, card making group and she culled a lot of her stuff and sent sent it down to me and then another lady on Facebook um, posted on Facebook that she was clearing out her mother's things and so I contacted her and explained about our card group with the cheapskates ladies and that we do our charity cards and um, we'd be grateful for any papers or anything that she sent and she sent us so much stuff that we are still using it so they were you know huge money savers for us Otherwise, I look for sales like Kaisercraft often have a 50% off sale. So they sell, Kaiser sell their regular playing card stocks, 12 to $5. Um, when it's 50% off, you get 12 $2.50. So if you basic card stock, that's a great way to go. But we have found if you don't have a Kaisercraft, Kmart in their crafty stationery section um, have big, um, 30 centimetre by 30 centimetre pads and they've got them in pastels, brights and, neutral. and neutrals and they are multicoloured so, but you'll find a way to use them because they work out to 16 cents a sheet. $16.27 a sheet. Sorry, $16 for the pad, 27 cents a sheet of cardstock. So that's, you know, that's Kaiser Craft on half price oh, pretty cool. much. And it's beautiful cardstock. It folds nicely, it cuts beautifully. And the colours are really pretty too. So we've actually been using that more than the Kaisercraft stuff. Otherwise, $2 shops, full of them. We have a shop here in Melbourne. 
There's one in Ferntree Gully. There's one in Footscray called Arthur Daly's. Amazing. Um, it's sort of a junky type shop. No, you know, nothing wrong with that. So you do have to sort of dig around through some of the stuff. But great um, brand name um, card making supplies and craft supplies and they cover, you know, it's folk art and um, crochet. They sell crochet cotton for $1.88. A dollar eighty-eight for a 50 gram ball. Mm-hmm. 50 gram ball of the um, four ply crochet cotton so that's an excellent price um, anyone that does tea towels um, the tea towel toppers or face washes trims trims hand towels and things will appreciate that that's actually even cheaper than buying it from straight from Bendigo woolen mills so my mad money goes mostly on my cards and things I rarely rarely go out for coffee or anything haven't done that for I don't know how many years. Um, if I'm going to meet someone, I have a friend that might come for lunch, so she'll say it's her turn to bring lunch, so she'll bring lunch, or it's my turn to do lunch, so she'll come and we'll have lunch here. So, yeah. The other thing I do, and I do sell some of my things, and that helps boost the coffers a bit. So some of my tea towels, some of my cards, the dishcloths, my needed dishcloths I sell. And that, um, all of the, that money goes back into my craft budget for me. That's my money. But I use those things for gifts too, so that works out as well. Any other questions? How are we going? There's a shop in one saggy from Michelle. There's a shop in one saggy that sells quilting, scrapbooking, wool, all at wholesale prices. Do you know the um, name, Michelle? That would be really good. Excellent. You don't need any more. No, we probably don't. <laughs> I like Rebecca's <laughs> Chicks with Attitude for the CWA <laughs> back in the 90s. I, to be, I absolutely loved CWA. When we were in, um, in the country, I enjoyed CWA. It was my once a month getaway and it was... Um, it was interesting and it was it's a great support network anyone and they do have CWA branches in the city too so if you are looking for somewhere to go to meet like-minded people I can recommend CWA they do amazing work amazing charity work um, the learning is is really interesting too i learned a lot of crafts while i was in cwa and a heap my my zucchini pickle recipe was this um came from cwa lady so lots of things to do right what else are we up to discount butcher in blacktown on bessemer road called west fresh let me make a note we'll look it up there you go anyone in blacktown area Why don't we eat pork? Oh, I don't, I can't stand it. <laughs> I just, I, I've never cooked it. Um, I don't like the look of it. I, I just, yeah, so that's pretty much why we don't eat pork. I, Wayne, Wayne and the kids will have bacon and ham. I'll occasionally have bacon. I'm not that fussed with ham. Um, but pork as in pork chops or a pork roast or a pork stir fry or something or from the Chinese shop, no, I just can't. And because I've never cooked it, I actually don't think I'd be able, <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to. Um, yes, I do batch cook, Jody. Um, for instance, on Tuesday night, I was making pasta sauce. So... When I do pasta sauce, I quadruple, at least quadruple the recipe and freeze it in meal portions. So the next time we have spag bowl or I need a topping for a ravioli or something, I don't have to cook it from scratch and start all over. It really only takes about five minutes longer to do the you know, quadruple batch as it does to do the single batch. So to me, it's, um, it's a no-brainer. It's just so much easier. So um, next week while I'm away, if the kids look at the meal plan and decide they don't want whatever's on it and they're going to have a uh, spag bowl, all they have to do is take the container out of the freezer and thaw it 
and warm it up and tip it over the spaghetti or over the ravioli or whatever um, they're going to have. It's so much easier. I do the same with soups. When I make soup, I do a huge, um, I have a 10 litre stock pot and a six litre crock pot. So I usually have the crock pot going and the stock pot going and do a whole heap, portion it out and freeze them in, in our meal size serves. It, it's just easier. And I think when you're busy, when you're working, you're busy, you've got a family to feed and a family to care for and a home to look after and all those other things that we all seem to have to do these days, batch cooking just makes sense. Doing as much as you can, as efficiently as possible, is it just makes sense to me to do that. Um, you know, if I'm making rissoles, I will do... Um, four or five kilos of mince, make all the rissoles at once. And I actually have one of those Tupperware things, twinkle, you know, but you can still make the patties like that. Use um, freezer go-between, stack them up, put them in the bags. I vacuum seal them, but just put them in a freezer bag and pop them in the freezer and they're done. Now, um, I use the cereal liners for freezer go-between. So, you know, add the wheat bix packet or the rice's packet. I, once the box is empty, they get um, very carefully ripped open down that centre seam at the back and wiped over and I hang them on the line to in the sun and then I cut them up to use as go-between in the freezer for the results and things. Same with tuna patties or fish cakes. If I'm making those, batch make them. Cream cheese patties, batch make them. There's no point, you know, you're going to make a big mess anyway, so you might as well make a little bit of a bigger mess to save time in the future. Um, the crust is called Hello Buys. There's one in Bologna too. Oh, cool. Hello Buys and there's one in Bologna. Ooh. 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 <laughs> I like a good craft store. What kind of lunches do I eat? And is it a separate meal plan? Look, I don't... Lunches and breakfasts, I don't plan as in write them down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, simply because we eat pretty much the same thing over and over. So breakfast, wheat bix, all brown for Wayne or rices. Sometimes on the weekend it might be pancakes or French toast. Lunches, sandwiches or leftovers or wraps. In winter it's soup and um, cruskets or soup and toast or something like that. Um, so they're pretty much, because I'm home most days for lunch, I'm, it's easier for me. Wayne will take packed lunches, so sandwiches. He has a, he has morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, sandwiches, fruit, um, a fruit cake or a fruit scone or something like that as a, a sweet thing. Off he goes with those. The boys, um, Thomas gets his own lunch. Alan buys his lunch. He doesn't take his lunch from home. And Hannah gets lunch at work. How lucky is that? Part of her job. She gets fed. I get free with food. Free food. Yeah. So I said I want a job there just for the free food. Um, now, where are we? Um, good, good cheap desserts. Good cheap desserts. Oh, jelly. Jelly and tinned fruit. Now, yeah. ladies, anyone in Melbourne's southeastern suburbs, Springvale, Noble Park, Keysborough, Dandenong will be familiar with Save More Discount Outlet on um, Dandenong Road, Princess Highway. They currently have um, boxes of 24 Foster Clark's jellies for $5. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah, it worked out to under 50 cents a box. I mean, the price of jelly, for goodness sakes. So... Jelly is a nice, cheap dessert with um, tinned fruit, although tinned fruits are rather expensive. Banana ice cream, and that's simply frozen bananas and use them in the food processor. So you're getting your serve of fruit with the um, treat of ice cream. That's not too bad. Old-fashioned puddings are usually the best. Um, so... For years I hated it, but fruit salad, and it uses up all those dodgy-looking bits of apple and orange and mandarins and the sad grapes and things that are lurking in the fruit bowl in the back of the fridge, works really well. Um, custard, baked egg custard, 
rice puddings, creamed pancakes. rice, pancakes, pancakes and syrup. Pancakes and syrup with a little bit of ice cream if you have it. They're all really easy to do. Um, things like, think back to what perhaps grandma used to do, bread and butter puddings, those sorts of things. And, and for a bread and butter pudding, it doesn't have to be bread. It can be raisin toast. It can be um, scones. It can be bread rolls. It can be, um, what are those, croissants, although we tend to eat them more of their own. We don't often get stale croissants, but croissants make a great bread and butter pudding. And don't be stuck with the raspberry jam. Try plum jam or marmalade. Raisin bread spread with marmalade makes a great bread and butter pudding it's delicious it's really easy um they're things that i like those sorts of desserts because they're not fiddly you make it you put it in the dish you bung it in the oven and that's your part done you just have to let it cook um what else i said custard didn't i yeah. an egg custard baked egg custard really easy if you're going to do that you could do custard tart um if you have a pie maker make pies Use um, stewed fruit, so stewed apples, stewed rhubarb in the pie maker or even stewed apples and rhubarb with a crumble on topping on them um, or a sponge topping and do an apple sponge. If you've got sad apples, peel them and core them and slice them. Sprinkle them with a bit of sugar, put them in a uh, casserole dish um, with a bit of water and nuke them until the apples are soft, so probably five, six minutes maybe, and then take it out and while it's, while it's um, in the microwave, make a sponge. So again, you can use my basic cake mix with one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, half a cup of milk, two eggs and some vanilla and a bit of melted butter. Pour that over the top and bake it in the oven for an apple sponge or an apricot sponge or a plum sponge or a rhubarb sponge or a fruit salad sponge if you have fruit salad um anything like that they're inexpensive you only need a little bit um to satisfy the sweet tooth and they're pretty easy and most people like the old-fashioned types of desserts um lemon meringue pie it's really easy and if you have lemon butter then you don't need to make the filling. So you just have a pie crust and if you don't don't make pie crust, buy one from the supermarket. Coles sell them for $2. Um, or use a biscuit crust, you know, crushed biscuits, butter, put it in the dish, bake it for 10 minutes, put it out, put your lemon filling in, make a meringue with two egg whites and um, two tablespoons of sugar and just beat it up, put that in the top and bake it till the meringue's nice and golden and peaky. And you've got a lemon meringue pie. You can do little ones. You can do big ones. Make it chocolate. Use a chocolate um, custard to do a chocolate meringue pie. It, it doesn't cost much. It will probably cost, if you're going to buy the pie crust, it will cost you mm, around $3 to make a chocolate meringue pie. Now, you should get eight serves out of that. So if you're a family of four, that's dessert for two nights, so $1.50 a night your dessert i know when wayne and i were first married and it was just us mm -hmm. i would um do a baked rice custard on a monday night we'd have four nights we'd have baked rice custard with ice cream and then over the weekend i would do a bread and butter pudding or um a lemon meringue pie or something like that and um again it was just the two of us, but I made sure we got eight serves out of it um, so that it would last. But in those days, it wasn't so much because I was budget conscious as I just really didn't like cooking. I'm much better at that now. Um, more questions? Um, when you do your monthly shop, do you do it at the start of the month and keep a balance of fresh food? Or do you do the shop at the end of the month with the balance of your shopping budget? Okay. First Friday of the month is shopping day. So whatever needs to be bought is bought. Um, I work on a cash budget, so I take my grocery money out on the first Friday of the month and I have a grocery money purse and I have a slush fund purse. I have my shopping list. 
I buy whatever's on the list and then take the grocery money um, and I usually, for the other weeks, it's usually once a fortnight, so I need to top up milk, bread and some fruit and veg and I know roughly how much it'll cost. So I keep that money aside. The rest of the money goes in the slush fund purse in case I find a really good special. And, yeah, that's how I do it. So I don't um, – I used to, when the children were small, I used to shop for the entire month and buy absolutely everything and freeze it. So all the bread, all the milk, fruit and vegetables, um, everything was bought. And it was a Thursday night we did our shopping then. And go on Thursday night, Wayne used to come with me and he'd push the trolley with the kids and I'd have my calculator and my shopping list and throwing things in because it was a huge, big job to do that monthly shop with all those fruits and veg and everything. Take it home, put it away. And what I used to do was the things, the fruit and veg that were um, going to go off fastest, like the soft fruits and the lettuces and things, they were the things that we ate first. And then the potatoes, the onion, the sweet potatoes, the carrots and things like that were for the end of the month. And I rounded them out with um, frozen peas and corn, beans, pretty much. I didn't buy much else in frozen veg in those days. So did that answer the question? Pretty much. I think so. Everyone happy with that? Um, fish cakes, when you batch cook them, do you freeze them before you cook them or after you cook them? Oh. With the fish cakes, I um, okay. I have this, I think I mentioned before, I don't like fat, I don't like greasy stuff. So I have this thing about frying in oil. So for the fish cakes, it's the, barely covers, the oil barely covers the pan. I put them in until they're hmm, just gold, flip it, just gold, take them out, cool them and then freeze them. And then when I want to cook them again, I put them in the oven and they crisp up beautifully. And that's how I do my schnitzels, um, crumb sausages, anything like that. I just barely brown them in the oil and it's the tiniest little bit of oil and then I finish them off in the oven. Um, so fish cakes get par-cooked, then frozen and then finished off in the oven when they're taken out. Recipe for the cream cheese patties. Oh, recipe for the cream cheese patties. Okay. So it's a block of cream cheese, which is 250 grams. Um, the Philadelphia style cream cheese, but use the generic one. Coles. Coles $3 how much? $3.30 at Coles. There you go. And it, Coles one's in a tube. I think Aldi's $3, but they don't always have it. Yeah, Aldi, the cream cheese is $3, but they don't always have it, which is a bit of a pain. But anyway, although it will freeze. So if you've got freezer room and you've got the budget in stock up, it does freeze. So cream cheese patties. So the cream cheese is obviously the main ingredient. Cooked rice. So I usually cook two cups of rice, a grated onion, um, a good pinch, which is probably more than a pinch because it's probably about a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of mixed herbs, the Italian herbs or mixed herbs, um, cream cheese, grated carrot, did I say, mm -hmm. and grated carrot, two, one or two, depends on how big the carrots are, mush it all up, crack an egg into it and mush it all up again and the egg just helps it all bind together, of course, and then shake them into patties so then it's into flour, into egg, into um, shake and bake or breadcrumbs. It's up to you. And then you can either freeze them as they are or brown them and um, they're done. Cream cheese patties, are, oh, they are so good. They are really nice hot. I love them cold the next day. They're so much better cold the next day. So hot with veggies for tea, next day have them cold with salad. They're so good, aren't they? Great for lunches. If you, um, you can make a burger with them. So get a round bun, slice it in half. So because I make my patties so they're sort of thickish, not thickish and round. Slice it, put it on your bun with lettuce and tomato, little drizzle of um, mayo. Oh, best sandwich ever. Really good. Right. Um, what vegetables do you freeze and what oil do you use? What vegetables do I freeze? Whatever we've got. So at the moment out in the garden we've got beans, if I can beat the possums and the birds too. 
So beans, I freeze beans. Um, I freeze cooked eggplant, um, cooked zucchini, onions, carrots, um, celery, sweet potato, parsnips, sweet, cauliflower. just about cauliflower, broccoli. The only thing I don't for the things I don't freeze, lettuce, uh, are the watery vegetables. So lettuce, mm -hmm. um, cabbage, um, bok choy, that sort of thing I don't I don't freeze because they don't thaw particularly nicely. Um, even if you're going to cook them, they don't thaw nicely, or at least I don't think they do. Um, potato will freeze if it's par-cooked. Um, pumpkin will freeze if it's par-cooked. Sweet potato freezes if it's par cooked, and by par cooked, I mean steam it for a few minutes and then cool it and then put it in the freezer, and it's fine to do that. And what oil? And what oil? I use olive oil or extra virgin olive oil and a sunflower or a safflower, depending on what I can get. I'm not a fan of canola oil. And I don't like the compounds, the mixed vegetable oils, just vegetable oil because it's made up of bits of whatever. And I don't like the taste of it. Um, they're the two oils I use. Mm. Um, do we use free range eggs? Do we use free range eggs when I can get them at a good price? Yes, we do. Now, I have a really good green grocer not too far from me and he sells eggs. Sometimes his eggs are very expensive. Sometimes his eggs are a regular price and sometimes they're really, really cheap, depending on whether the poultry farm has an abundance or not. Um, and it depends, too, on the poultry farm, whether they're um, free-range or free-range organic. Um, so most of the time they're free-range. Um, but it really, for me, really depends on price because we go through a lot of eggs. We go through three to four dozen eggs a week. And that's because eggs are uh, eggs are cheap. Everyone goes, you know, they are three dollars a dozen or three dollars fifty a dozen. But when you think about that, eggs are a really good source of protein, vitamin D, vitamins. There's a whole heap of good stuff in eggs. So two eggs makes a meal and replaces. So for fifty cents, you've replaced a five dollar piece of steak. So don't, I wrote a book a while back called Everybody's Got to Eat Eggs. Everybody should eat eggs. And I know that there was a lot of fuss a few years ago, more than a few years ago, probably 20, 25, 30 years ago, about eggs and cholesterol. The um, attitude has changed slightly. So your eggs are fine to eat. I think the recommendation is no more than five a week. So, but we do use a lot of eggs. Um, we like quiche. We like custards. I always, when the children were little, I always added an egg to a stirred custard um, for extra nutrition in the custard for them, um, especially if they were sick. When they were little, we had ground rice porridge for breakfast and I would add an egg to the ground rice porridge. Um, again, it just gave it a bit of a nutritional boost. So eggs are, I consider eggs replacing the meat portion of our meal. So we will have baked beans and eggs. We don't have baked beans, steak and eggs, although we might be having steak, eggs and chips on our anniversary. I'm not really sure yet. So, but yeah, eggs take the place of the protein. They form the protein part of our meal. Um, what else is there? Maureen, um, Look on the um, under the ebooks section on the website, and you'll find the Everybody's Got to Eat Eggs. Um, Everybody's Got to Love Eggs ebook. I think it's um, go to the page. It's at the top on the right hand side. I'm a bit dyslexic here. Can you put the cheapskate on the cheapskate site? Those variations. Yes, I can do that for you. Who's that for, Irene? Yep. No problem, Irene. Hi, Julie. Glad you could join us. Um, it was Christina asked about the eggs? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, great. Look, if I could have eggs here, I have eggs. If I could have hens here, I would. We have very little backyard space. What we do have is taken up with my shed and the veggie beds and the clothesline. Um, we've talked about ripping up under our veranda and stuff and doing things there. And I've talked about down the side of the house making a big long chicken run and stuff. But maybe one day I'll have my own hens, but I can't have them here at the moment. But I wish I could because if we did have our own hens, they'd definitely be free range. They'd definitely be organic, um, like our veggies that I grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do um, you use custard powder or make your own? I use custard powder. I I know some people like the idea of doing it all from scratch, but seriously, custard powder works for me. It's not expensive. It lasts for ages. It, it doesn't go off. It stores well. And it's easy. It's quick. I don't buy mm, I don't buy instant custards, you know, those just add hot water and stir things. And I don't buy the um, UHT custards or the um, ones oh from the chiller section of the supermarket. But, yeah, I do use custard. I think for me, and I guess for most people, when you're on a budget, a grocery budget, you have to pick and choose. So the 90-cent packet of custard powder is going to save me... It takes, I don't know, less than a minute to mix up. By the time you add the custard powder to the milk, give it a whisk, add a drop of vanilla if you want to and a bit of sugar if you want to and put it in the microwave. It's under a minute. Whereas to make it from scratch, you're doing the measuring and you're doing that. It takes longer. My time is also worth money to me as well and so is my sanity. And some things, it's just easier to just say, nope, I'm going for the convenience. And custard powder is one of my conveniences, um, as is when I'm pushed for time, gravy powder. Normally I will make gravy. I'll use the pan drippings and the flour, and I love that gravy. Homemade gravy, a bit of Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of soy sauce if you want to, some onion powder, some garlic powder. makes beautiful gravy. But I don't always have that time where I can get a, a bowl of water and toss in the gravy powder, give it a whisk, put it in the microwave and it's done. Um, so, again, the, the cost of the convenience is worth it for me in that instance. What was your latest Cheapskates book? Uh, Eat Well, Save More was the last book I wrote. I'm working, I'm working on one. Um, I'm working on one that is actually an extension of Eat Well, Save More. Excuse me, we are working on one. We are working on one. Sorry, sweetheart. We are working on one that's an extension of Eat Well, Save More, and it is a year of meal plans with the recipes and basic shopping lists. Um which sounds easy when I say it like that. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Um, sounds really easy when I say it like that. And coming up with the year's meal plans was a breeze. <laughs> but um, putting it all together in and then getting it so that it's a form in a format that is able to be printed um, is the tricky bit. But hopefully... I was hoping for April for this book, maybe late April, and maybe we'll release it for Mother's Day. <laughs> I don't know. But it, it's that's my next book and that's what it will be. And it will be pretty much the extension of Eat Well, Save More, which is Feed Your Family for $320 a month. So it will still be based around that $320 a month, um, but in greater detail. So more recipes, more actual meal plans and the shopping list that go with them. So. Um, do we store our goods in plastic containers or leave them in the packet? <gasps> Weevils. Oh, look, no, no, no. Always. Okay. 
any dry good that comes into the house goes straight into the freezer. Now, minimum of seven days. So pasta flour, sugar, corn flour, rolled oats, um, the spelt flour, the cereals, the muesli, that sort of thing, straight into the freezer and for a minimum of seven days. Now, if I have the freezer room, it just stays there till I need the freezer room again and I move it out on move them out onto the pantry shelf. They stay there. Once they go into my kitchen pantry from the stockpile shelves into the kitchen pantry, this is sounding very complicated, but it's not. They go into um, Tupperware containers. I don't have open packets in my pantry. I can't stand open packets in the pantry because I can't, the box, you can't see what's in it. I like a clear container so I know I've got to refill the sugar canister or the flour canister or the rice is getting low. I know that. So, um, yeah, no, no packets in the actual kitchen pantry. Um, do we cook with spelt flour for banana cake? Um, yes, why not? Um, I use, I substitute spelt flour um, in my whole orange cake. Um, the carrot cake makes great carrot cake. Um, my sweet potato chocolate muffins. Um, have spelt flour in them. If I've got it, I use it. It makes no difference. I don't think it makes any difference to the um, finished product and I've never had any complaints. I complain. I don't like the texture. Oh, Hannah complains she doesn't like the texture. It's not true. It is. No, she eats it all the time. Um, <laughs> are we hoping to do live chats? And if so, when? Like what night? Live chat. Like this. Like this, yes. Tuesdays and Thursdays um, we decided on. Um, so Tuesday will be a basic um, living the cheapskates way, budgeting, frugal living, that sort of um, genre. And we'll save Thursdays for the kitchen stuff. So the meal planning, the recipes, the cooking ideas, the shopping, anything like that. Um, I mentioned earlier that we will set up on our website, we will set up um, a form where you can just um, email us. If you've got any questions, you can email us and um, we'll do our best to answer them for you, um, whichever night it fits into. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Julio read on our on the website um, that a family can really live off one income. Is that really possible? Yeah, of course it is. Um, look, I, I'm just going to be blunt. If you really want to do it, you can do it. Now, I know we have quite a few. I'm looking at some names on here. I know there's quite a few people on here that live on one income, raise their families, live good lives on one income. You make, you make a choice. You choose to live on one income and within that choice, you then have to decide what's important to you. You choose to ditch the stuff that's not important so that you've got the money to have the stuff that is. So if you really want to live on one income, you're going to have to decide, do you really need to get your nails done every fortnight? Do you really need to go to the hairdresser every six weeks? Can you stretch it out to eight weeks or can you even do better and cut your own hair? Can you cut your husband's hair and save the barber's fees? Can you um, find cheaper, tastier meals? Can you change the way you shop so that your grocery budget will go down? Can you... Um, are you prepared to perhaps do more op shopping, garage sailing, thrifting, so that you can still dress really nicely and very fashionably, but for $150 a year instead of $2,000 a year? Can you, are you happy to drive a 10-year-old car as opposed to a two-year-old car? Little things like that. With your holidays, are you prepared to do budget holidays for years? <laughs> For years, our holidays were two weeks with Grandma in Melbourne and two weeks with Granny in Sydney. The accommodation was free. That meant that we could do things like take the kids to the zoo or to, um, you know, somewhere exciting, go to the movies and things because we weren't paying the accommodation costs. Um, 
as they got older, we went camping. And that was even cheaper because they took their bikes and rode them around the bush. Um, it's a choice you make. If you really want to do it, you can find a way to do it. And, yes, there will be sacrifices. Um, it's uh, like I was talking to a lady on Wednesday and they're on the verge of losing their house. And they both work. Um, and really the only reason they're on the verge of losing their house is that they're not prepared to give up anything to pay down that mortgage. So they, someone asked if we eat out, you know, we'd be lucky to eat out once every two months. This couple's out Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Um, she does a Coles online shop, but she just buys. She doesn't have a shopping list. She doesn't have a meal plan. Um, they're going away. They're going to Bali. You know, if, if you, they're things that you can't do if you don't have the income. So if you're going to go back to one income, I would suggest before you actually do it, you do a give a trial run. So if you've got two incomes coming in, which one is going to go? Um, bank that income and try living for three months on just, the one wage and see how you survive and see what you're prepared to give up and what changes you're prepared to make to your lifestyle because it is a huge lifestyle change. Um, it's, um, I would assume it's going to be a permanent change and not just for a maternity leave or something like that. So you need to think, you know, six months, 12 months, five years down the track, what are your goals? What do you want to achieve? How are you going to do that on one income? What are you prepared to do? Um, homemaking is it's a dying art, but it's also an occupation. So by whoever's going to be the homemaker, um, doing the cooking, doing the cleaning, doing the ironing, having the time to shop around, looking for the caring for the children so you don't have daycare fees, um, that sort of thing, are those changes going to be enough to make up for the income that you're losing? But, yes, it can be done. Um, will we send reminders for live chats? Yes. Um, yes, we do send reminders for live chats. If you're on our newsletter list, you should have got one this afternoon and I post them on Facebook. Um We've also got a show notes page on our website. So if you go to the website, which is cheapskatesclub.net, um, third item down on the menu on the left is show notes. It will tell you, you'll find the links to things from tonight's show and Tuesday night's show, and it will give you the upcoming, the next show that's coming up. Um, you'll be able to find out. And Hannah's giving me the wind up. Have we talked for too long? Over an hour. Over an hour. Sorry, folks. I do like to waffle, don't I? Um, next week, I may or may not be live, but there will be a video for you. Um, depending on where we are, <laughs> I may not have internet connection. Thank you, Telstra. But, you know, we tend to go um, off the beaten track a bit when we go away. So I may not be live, but there will be a video for you um, Tuesdays and Thursdays while I'm away. And if I can fit in a live, hopefully, fit in a live one for you, I will be so excited too and I can show you the beautiful Tasmanian countryside while I'm doing it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Remember to like, share and subscribe. And don't forget when we reach 1,000 subscribers, we're going to have that amazing giveaway. All right, thank you so much for joining us again and I'll be thinking of you while I'm relaxing in Tasmania. Bye.